guys! Welcome to another episode of Financial Accounting Tutorials. Today we will be discussing Property, Plant, and Equipment Part 2. So to start, let's first discuss the subsequent measurement of PPE assets. Revaluation method. After recognition, the entity shall choose either cost model or revaluation model as an accounting policy. For cost model, an item of PPE shall be carried at cost less accumulated depreciation and any accumulated impairment losses. For revaluation model, after recognition, an item of PPE whose fair value can be measured reliably shall be carried at a revalued amount. For revalued amount, it is the fair value at the date of revaluation less any subsequent accumulated depreciation and subsequent accumulated impairment losses. So for the basis for revaluation in determining the fair value, an entity should first consider the non-financial assets highest and best use. Second, observe the fair value hierarchy and third, use valuation techniques that are appropriate in the circumstances and for which sufficient data are available to measure fair value. For the highest and best use, it is the use of financial assets by market participants that would maximize the value of the asset or the group of assets and liabilities. Under the highest and best use, you should consider the following. First is the physical characteristics of the non-financial asset. Second, is the legal restrictions on the use of the non-financial asset. And lastly, the financial feasibility, whether the use of the asset generates adequate income or cash flows. There are three levels in the fair value hierarchy. Level one is observable inputs that reflect quoted prices for identical assets or liabilities in active markets. Level 2, inputs other than quoted prices included in level 1 that are observable for the asset or liability either directly or through corroboration with observable data. And level 3 are only unobservable inputs. In this fair value hierarchy, the level 1 is the most reliable and the level 3 is the least reliable. Accounting for revaluation of PPE. If an asset carrying amount is increased as a result of revaluation, the increase shall be recognized in other comprehensive income and accumulated in equity under the heading of revaluation surplus. However, the increase shall be recognized in profit or loss as gain on impairment reversal to the extent that it reverses an impairment loss of the same asset previously recognized in profit or loss. The formula when revaluating items of PPE is fair value less carrying amount which will result to revaluation surplus. If an asset's carrying amount is decreased as a result of a revaluation, the decreases shall be recognized in profit or loss. However, the decrease shall be recognized in other comprehensive income to the extent of any credit balance existing in the revaluation surplus in respect of that asset. For valuation techniques, these are uses which are appropriate in the circumstances and for which sufficient data are available to measure fair value, maximizing the use of relevant observable inputs and minimizing the use of unobservable inputs. There are three widely used valuation techniques. First is the market approach. The market approach uses prices and other relevant information generated by market transactions involving identical and comparable assets, liabilities, or a group of assets and liabilities. The factors to be considered in comparison include, but not limited, are the following. First, location. Second, features of the location. Third, size of the property. Fourth, the physical features. And lastly, the legal restrictions. Second valuation technique is called cost approach. The cost approach reflects the amount that would be required currently to replace the service capacity of an asset. It is most applicable when, first, the asset being revalued is relatively new. Second, there is insufficient data on recent market transactions of similar assets. Third, there is a special use of property. And lastly, there is an adequate pricing information to value the property and its components. So the cost approach includes the following steps. First, estimate the replacement cost of the building. 
Second, estimate the depreciation. For example, consider the building physical deterioration, functional and location of solvents. Third is the economic life, which is um, effective life plus remaining economic life. And third, percentage depreciation, which is effective life divided by total economic life. And the depreciation is the percentage depreciation times the replacement cost. Note that when applying the cost approach, appraisers normally assume that the property being revalued is depreciated under the straight line method because this method is easier and much simpler to apply. So in estimating the fair value of the building, the fair value is equivalent to replacement cost minus their depreciation. The third valuation technique is called the income approach. The income approach converts future amounts to a single current or discounted amount reflecting the current market expectations about those future amounts. This involves estimating first the annual income, net of operating expenses, which the property can potentially generate. Second, the appropriate discount rate or capitalization rate which shall be applied. These are the following terms that are essential to the um, revaluation of the PPE. First is actual life or the chronological or historical life. The actual life is the number of years that have elapsed since construction of the building was complete. Second, effective life. Effective life is based on the amount of surf deterioration and obsolescence that the building has sustained. The fair value is the price that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measured date. There are two approaches in recording the revaluation. First is the proportional approach. Proportional approach is the accumulated depreciation at the date of revaluation is restated proportionately with the change in the gross carrying amount of the asset so that the carrying amount of the asset after revaluation equals the revalued amount. Second is elimination approach. Under elimination approach, the accumulated depreciation is eliminated against the gross carrying amount of the asset and the net amount restated to the revalued amount of the asset. Under subsequent accounting for revaluation surplus, revaluation is initially recognized in other comprehensive income as either revaluation gain or revaluation loss unless the revaluation represents impairment loss or reversal of impairment loss in which it is recognized in profit or loss. When the asset is non-depreciable, the revaluation surplus is transferred directly to retained earnings when the asset is derecognized. When the asset revalued is depreciable, a portion of the revaluation surplus may be transferred periodically to retained earnings as the asset is being used. Under frequency of revaluation, revaluations shall be made with sufficient regularity to ensure that the carrying amount does not differ materially from that which would be determined using fair value at the end of the reporting period. When the fair value of a revalued asset differs materially from its carry amount, a further revaluation is required. For items with insignificant and volatile changes in fair value, annual depreciation is necessary. For items with insignificant changes in fair value, revaluation may be made every three or five years. Under the recognition, the disposal of an item of property, plant, and equipment may occur in a variety of ways. Um, example, sale, finance lease, ordination, etc. The gain or loss arising from the recognition of an item of PPE shall be determined as the difference between the net disposal proceeds and its carry amount. Also, it shall be included in profit or loss. The consideration receivable on disposal of an item of PPE is recognized initially at fair value. If the payment of the item is deferred, the consideration received is recognized initially at cash price equivalent. Under compensation for impairment, the compensation from third parties for items of property, plant, and equipment that were impaired, lost, or given up shall be included in profit or loss when the compensation becomes a receivable. Impairment for PPE and other losses related claims for payments of compensation from third parties and any subsequent purchase or construction of a replacement asset are separate economic events and are all accounted for separately. 
For disclosure, the financial statement shall be disclosed for each class of property, plan, and equipment. First is the measurement basis used for determining the gross carrying amount. Second, the depreciation methods used. Third, the gross carry amount and the accumulated depreciation at the beginning and end of period. And fourth, a reconciliation of the carry amounts at the beginning and end of period showing the additions, disposals, and other changes. The financial statements shall also disclose first, the existence and amounts of restrictions on title and PPE pledge as security and liabilities. Second, the amount of expenditures recognized in the carry amount of an item of PPE in the course of its construction. Third is the amount of contractual commitments for the acquisition of PPE. And fourth, the compensation for impairment losses. The depreciation is also uh, must be included in disclosure of financial statements, whether recognizing profit or loss or as part of the cost of other assets during a period and accumulated depreciation at the end of the period. And lastly, the changes in estimates with respect to first, residual values. Second, decommissioning at restoration cost. Third, useful lives. And lastly, depreciation methods. If the items of property, plant, and equipment are stated at revalued amounts, they should disclose the following. First, the effective date of revaluation. Second, whether an independent value was involved. Third, the methods and significant assumptions applied in estimating the item's fair value. Fourth, the extent to which the item's fair values were determined directly by reference to observable prices in an active market or recent market transactions on an arm's length terms or were estimated using other valuation techniques. Fifth, for each revalued class of PPE, the carry amount that would have been recognized had the assets been carried under the cost model. And sixth, the revaluation surplus indicating the change for the period and any restrictions on the distribution of the balance to the shareholders. For the users of financial statements, they may also find the following information relevant to their needs. First, the carrying amount of temporarily idle property, plant and equipment. Second, the gross carrying amount of any fully depreciated PPE that is still in use. Third, the carrying amount of PPE retired from the active use and not classified as held for sale in accordance with TFRS 5. And fourth, the fair value PPE when this is materially different from the carrying amount. So that's it. Thanks for watching and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.